when it comes to co-regulation, you, you, you said that co-regulation is a big part of big part of therapy and your work. Do we have to do a bit of self-regulation and moving towards co-regulation? Yeah, towards- that's the thing. That that's the thing is it's kind of this catch catch twenty two, because we can't be a co-regulator for someone else unless we're actually well enough self-regulated. Yeah. And it, because to be, to co-regulate, you have to actually have access to your uh, bio, biological safety pathways. And when you do, you will naturally give off cues of safety. So any other person who's not in their safety state will pick up on those cues and help. that will help them to access their safety state. And all this is unconscious. None of it's planned out. It's just, it's just two nervous systems talking to each other. But we, I can't offer co-regulation to my clients unless I'm actually in my safety state. I can't be in my safety state unless I'm self-regulated enough to, to be there. And what sucks is that a lot of people, well, so to pile on to that, it's a lot harder to be self-regulated if I didn't get co-regulation growing up. Yeah. If we don't have it growing up, we can't exactly self-regulate as we get older, which means we can't really pass really? it on to our kid, our own kids or our loved ones or whoever. And so, but at some point, we have to break that cycle. And if people are hearing this, if you know about polyvagal theory, it's like you're 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 in this the realm of breaking the cycle because now you have this new information. You're aware of co-regulation of self-regulation. So like you have this new paradigm, this new knowledge that you can build from. And even if you're not getting it from whoever, how can you begin the capacity? the practice of building your own self-regulation, even if you didn't get it or are not getting it efficiently or, or enough in life. Like we, we kind of have to eventually say like, I, I, it's on me. I have to be able to self-regulate. Ideally we co-regulate with each other, but we don't control other people. So if you're learning about political theory at some point, I think it's like, okay, well, how can I build my capacity to self-regulate even if no one else is going to offer me the co-regulation or they suck at it? How can I build my own self-regulation? And if you can do that, then you can start to offer co-regulation to your own kids or your loved ones or whoever else. Yeah. So it's not just emotional intelligence or self-regulation. It's also co-regulation. When it comes to down to it, actually, to functioning in life, it's co-regulation. You know, I have to reach out to you and say, hi, Justin, can we have a chat? Sometimes, you know, if I'm going to be successful in the world, successful in the world, I have to yeah. develop this into co-regulation, right? After the kind of, kind of. What, what, what we, we can't conflate co-regulation with um, cooperation. Oh, they, yes. They, thank you. Yes. Okay. Co- <laughs> co-regulation. Well, yeah. Go ahead. So cooperation is coming from that ability, isn't it? From that history of... I think ideally co-regulation is a part of cooperation, but two people who hate each other can say, like, let's just, let's just cooperate, we'll get through this, and then we're done. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, that, I, doesn't, that doesn't I, involve co-regulation, right? As far as yes. I know. But no, co-regulation is not just two people working on something. It, to, co-regulation is a biological... Yes. A uh, brainstem level event or series of events, maybe phenomenon. I don't know what to call it. But co regulation is, is not just like me listening to somebody. That's, we'll call that support. But underneath, that's the behavior. Underneath the behavior is the biological mechanisms. Now, this is where we can kind of play around with this stuff. Is the biological mechanisms of what's happening in my nervous system and yours. And you said we're not islands or that we are a community and you're right, but we also are islands. We are individuals. And co-regulation happens between two individuals. So if, if one of those individuals has access to their safety state, so if those biological pathways are active, I will not choose to all of a sudden I'll do things like smile like you're doing right now. I squints when they're it's a genuine smile. I'll have vocal prosody, all these biological shifts. So my, my neck muscles will be able to go up and down 
yeah. or whatever muscles are involved in the, the ability to use vocal prosody. So as I do these things, as I squint my eyes and nod my head or, or tilt my head to the side, that's going to signal to your brainstem, Justin is safe. Your brainstem will neurocept, which is it, neuroception is the is the uh, is the skill not skill but the capacity to take in outside information and then into the brainstem, which then again I don't want to say decides but decides safety, danger or life threat, and then shifts the autonomic nervous system to the appropriate level of response. Okay, so through a sequence of events of safety, flight, bite, and then shut yeah. down. Co-regulation is me. So let's say I'm in a safety state and you're not. You're, you're down your ladder, flight, fight stuff, right? So if I have access to my safety state, I will do things like eye squints, smiles. Maybe I'll be more animated with you. I'll be able to use my, my body to express that I'm safe. Not I won't be encroaching on space and like getting close to you. I won't be like backing off like this. I'll be, hey, I'm here with you. All these things will happen from me without me choosing to. You will neurocept this mammal in front of me, Justin, that I'm calling Justin. This mammal is safe because if Justin wasn't safe, if this organism was not safe, it would not be able to use eye squints. It would not be able to smile. The fact that my myself as an organism can can smile shows your self as an organism that I'm a, I'm approachable, I'm safe. You can be close to me. We can hug each other if we wanted to. You might feel this like spontaneous urge to smile along with me. That's co-regulation where it helps you activate your safety state, and then your behavior changes along with it. Co-regulation is a biological phenomenon. Not just two people working together, so that's no. why that's why I, I would say, yes, we need each other on a very primitive, very biological level. We need each other to be safe. I agree, but that co-regulation does not happen unless I am self-regulating, and unless, well, unless one of us is self-regulating. So we need each other, yes, but I'm also an individual, and I bring myself myself as an organism to this interaction so it's kind of on me to make sure i can do the best i can to self-regulate and then bring that self-regulation to us which will be which will then naturally offer co-regulation so yeah we're a community we unite in each other in that way but i better bring my best self and i'm gonna hope you bring your best self so we have two individuals responsible for themselves coming together to me, nice. that's, that's the ideal situation. That's how I look at things. And I, yeah. I'm breaking, I'm, t I'm completely unromanticizing things. I'm looking at you as an organism and at me as an organ. You can't get any less, you know, romantic, uh, emotional than that. Like that's just bare bones. We're just two organisms interacting. You know what I mean? I feel these pushes and these pulls toward each other or away from each other. And hopefully I'm doing enough and you're doing enough to encourage us to feel like we can come closer to each other. Very, very, very beautiful. Yeah. Honestly, it's um, it's so powerful that yeah, um, and, it is. Yeah, and, and I don't know why we just don't want to acknowledge that part of our biology as a social organ. Or right. I, don't I think know we've lost. I, I think I we've lost it, man. Honestly, I think that it's still within us, but we now we're at a point where, where we have to consciously learn. <laughs> like we have to be taught this, but we we also don't because it's still within us. Yeah, like I, I get you. my yeah, you as an organism, me as an organism, we already ourselves have this in our DNA. We already know it on that level, but we end up traumatizing each other. Not you and me, but just in general, people traumatize each other, We're horrible to each other, and so we get stuck in these defensive states. And we lose access to those safe poles toward each other. We get stuck in defense. And so we're on we become less capable of recognizing safety. Or if we feel it, like if I feel a pull towards somebody, that might feel uncomfortable all of a sudden. If I'm stuck, if I'm used to being in a defensive state, 
feeling that pull toward you, I might be like, this is a, I, I don't know this feeling. You know what I mean? That might be the story. And so that's going to send me right back down in my defensive. It's going to reinforce that defensive state. So now people have to come along like Dr. Porters and say, look what I've discovered. <laughs> what it's like, well, we already know it on a DNA level, but you now you're giving us the words and the science and the measurements to what we already know on a DNA level. So now we have to learn this on this like executive functioning cognitive level. And we now we have to like relearn this stuff from the top down when really it's already there from the bottom up. Like it's there, you know, but now we have to learn from top down. That's that's kind of where we are as a yeah. species of uh, humanity. 